Howdy, Exo Farmers. Welcome to Titanium Mine. I am still in my casual lumberjack phase, so I thought that it would be a great time to talk about exo farming, i.e., trying to farm on an alien planet while being in a giant mech suit. Of course, I'm talking about Lightyear Frontier, a game that came out very recently where you crash land on an alien planet. Man, if I had a dime for every time that happened in a game, right? But you see, in this game, you're not fighting alien monsters or hostile tribes or anything. No, no, no. What you're doing in Lightyear Frontier is you're doing Stardew Valley in first person in a giant mech. Very important to explain that. Your general goal in the game is to start putting down crops harvesting resources, and uncovering ancient ruins. And you do it, all while a little voice in your head basically says, it's a wonderful day, why don't you get out there and do something? Good morning, sleepyhead. I can't stop admiring those nice decorations you built yesterday. You've really got an eye for that kind of thing. Thanks, Mom. Anyway, the uh, fact of the matter is that I did end up playing the game for quite a while. But I didn't know if I was going to. And the reason why is because it starts out pretty slow. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you here. It really does start out slow. The first task that they give you in this game after you've crash landed is you've got to repair your mech. Okay, that's easy. It's just getting you used to the general techniques of harvesting resources and applying them to things. Okay, you, you repair your mech perfectly fine. But then, because reasons, you have to go around and find chests that have all of your actual tools in them. And so this basically requires a lot of wandering around in a big mech, doing nothing really except trying to get to these chests that will unlock the tools that you're going to need for your journey. And there are several different tools that you are going to need for this. Adventure. You're going to need a vacuum. So that you can suck up weeds, but then you can also suck up water. Which you're going to need for your water gun. Which is how you water your crops. Or you're going to need a seed gun so that you can put seeds into the ground so that you can water them so that you can get crops. Or you need your spike saw, which you can use to mine ore, or you can chop down trees with it. You need these things so that you can build your house, you can build your crafting stations, you can build all of the chests that you're going to put the materials in that you're going to need for your crafting stations, etc. And this is just kind of tedious. Uh, it's the kind of thing that will probably make you fall asleep because this opening is just, it feels, feels very dragged out. After you collect these five tools, and we'll get to why that's too many in a minute, but after you get these five tools, they basically kind of go, hey, let's put down a shack, a tent in the woods somewhere, put down a tent, uh, start to do some different crafting things, and then start to realize that you hit a few roadblocks along the way. I don't know how to get these new upgrades. It looks like there's this new thing that I can get, but I don't know where this resource is. And so the game kind of asks you passively, without explicitly saying it, that you're going to have to figure out where these things are. That's kind of, I guess, the idea of the exploration of the game. It's like, yeah, you're going to need iron bars. Okay, well, for iron bars, I'm probably going to need iron. Where can I find iron? And they're like, mm. <laughs> where do you think you'll find iron? Somewhere. So you have to travel around the map to find it. The difficulty comes when you need to have upgrades to your weaponry in order to do that. What the game doesn't really tell you is that some of these resources can only really be harvested by getting certain upgrades. 
either upgrading your saw so that you can cut through heavier wood or mining ore by uh, liberating different areas where resources will come up if you've, you've removed the corruption from those areas, or by getting certain upgrades just so that you can access different areas of the map. And the thing about it is, is that the upgrades aren't really presented to you at the very beginning of the game, even after you've started to collect these resources. It's presented to you a little bit later, and then you have to figure out where the resources are so that you can build your upgrade station. Once that happens, though, and you get the upgrade station up, and you start to uncover a little bit more of the storyline where you build like a radio tower and you get... Uh, you get get a little shopkeeper that comes so that you can trade resources. Then the game picks up a lot. And then all of a sudden you start to realize that there's a lot of stuff to do. And you can easily fill your day. But there is a very slow progression for the first few hours of the game where you're like, I don't know if it's really worth continuing. Uh, that is something I would improve upon, if it were me, to try and get people into it faster, and to make it clear what you would need to do. Uh, some of the instructions are very obscure. They do have, like, a quest log, but a lot of times in the quest log, it's a little, it's vague what you're really supposed to do. Figure out what the ruins are for. How do you reach this area? I don't know, Log. Could you direct me to a thing so that I can figure that out? That would be useful. The thing about it is that kept me engaged was that the world is very charming. You know, first of all, they put you in a giant mech, so that's fun. But then, additionally, they put you in this world that really feels vibrant. It has a nice art style to it. Um, it feels uh, lively. And it doesn't... Uh, feel oppressive at all you know there's no monsters that attack you there are like alien creatures around but they mostly just want you to feed them that's pretty much it uh, here's some pellets you learn how to make pellets for them here enjoy the pellets once you start to really explore the map and realize that there are different resources that pop up as you remove corruption and as you get better upgrades and learn how to do all that then all of a sudden you start to get this sensation of really accomplishing things. Oh, now I need to figure out where this resource is. Oh, now I need to figure out how to get to this area. Oh, there are islands over there, but I can't go into water. So how am I going to get across there? I probably need an upgrade. I need to liberate all these sections. And then they'll start providing other ideas and like little clues to what you're supposed to do. You uh, remove the corruption, all the corrupt weeds and the goo all over the place uh, from one area. You cleanse it, and then a little light over an ancient doorway pops up, and you see that there's like six of these lights. So, okay, cool. I know that there's six areas that I gotta liberate, and then I can get in here, and that's going to, you know, start the next part of my journey, because it's gonna unlock an ability that allows me to get to other areas. That's when things really pick up. Having a trader there is really useful, too because it allows you to trade resources that you have an abundance of, but then you get ones that you haven't been able to find very easily for currency. And so that is also something that really provides rocket fuel to your experience overall. The other thing that really provides rocket fuel is when it comes to planting. Because when I started the part where you're actually harvesting crops which happens because you vacuum up different plants and you get the seeds from them so you can plant them yourself. When I started doing that process, I thought to myself, oh no, this is going to be tedious. The reason is because you get a seed, you, you have your seeds loaded in your seed gun, you take your seed gun over to the plot and you, you, point, it at the, <laughs> you point it at the plot and you pew! Put, put the seed in, and then you move to the next little square, and there's, in this initial plot that you get, you can have nine of these. So you're going pew, 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 pew. And then you get your water cannon, and you need to go splish, 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 
Splish, splish, splish, splish, splish, splish. And this is, you've, you've successfully completed one of these. And I thought to myself, oh no. <laughs> there's, there's gonna be a bunch of plants and this is going to get tedious really, really quickly. Again, what the game does not tell you is that when you get to upgrading and you unlock that ability, you can uh, basically auto-target a selection of these plots with seeds that you have equipped, and you also get abilities to create splash damage, essentially with your, your water cannon, so that you could create a big old pool and you can, you know, just lob a giant tsunami of water into the general garden area that you have so that it minimizes that. Uh, the the auto lock-on is really cool, too. You just, you, you like, hold down your button and you just go over it and it uh, creates little pinpoints on all the little sections. And it's like, yeah, all of these. Do you want to plant it in all these? Yes, please. Pew! And then you just see all the seeds spread out over, all over the place. And that's fun. You also later get the ability to literally turn your mech into a tiller so that you can just go over a whole span of land and just lay down a bunch of fields for crop production. I am glad that I stuck with it because Lightyear Frontier is just one of those games that has a slow start to it, might be a little hard for people to get into, but ultimately has a lot of really interesting stuff in it. Uh, the middle section, where you're really going around the map and you've started to figure out where all of the resources are and you're collecting those and you have goals for what you want to build. I want to build, like, my mansion and I want to build my my seaside paradise and, and put stuff out there. Once you get to that point and you really feel like you have a lot of stuff to do in the in the day, that's when things really are roaring. And there's a good chunk of the game that is that. But then we kind of get to the other end of it, which is a problem that you see a lot in farming games for late stage, which is I'm basically just farming for the sake of farming. There's not really anything else for me to do except to try to plant a bunch of crops, water those crops, and then by the time I'm done with the fields and everything, the day's almost over, I guess I'll go home and sleep. Get up the next day and repeat the process. There's not really anything else to explore at this point, so I guess I'll just water my crops and produce more. Uh, and then I can use those crops to make oils and to make, uh, you know, glass shards and stuff like that. You know, There's a good... 20 hours i'd say for the game before it falls off where you're just like i'm just maintaining the farm for the sake of maintaining the farm the first two three hours or so is slow and it's the kind of slow burn where you start to wonder if you want to play however the following like i don't know four or five hours where it starts to pick up steam and you start to explore a little bit more and get used to the systems and stuff, that's pretty nice. And then there's this nice piece that's in the middle after that where you really get interested in exploring this world and you really get used to it. Like these upgrades, you get used, you see the d different upgrades I can do. Oh, I can fly further. I can, I can run faster. You know, I can do, I can do all these things. I can harvest these crops that I couldn't before. And now I really have a reason to go out there and collect all of these resources. And that's going to be cool. There's this, th that chunk right there is where the game shines. Between like the, the 10 and 20 hour mark is, is where it really, really shines. And then you have the come down, which is like the five hours after that, the ten hours after that, where you're like, ah, cool, I unlocked the ruins, I've explored all of these places, I've, I've terraformed stuff, I've, you know, explored the islands, I've gotten to all these places, I've met some people, I've done some tasks for a few other folks, I've, I've learned a little bit more about the lore, I've, I've figured out that the, the, these ancient ruins exist and, and uh, you know, explored all that. Uh... What do I do now? You just realize that you're maintaining it past that. 
So there is a come down period to it too. Uh, not the kind of longevity that you would imagine from like a Sardew Valley, because there are no other characters really that you have interpersonal relationships with. They're very tangential. Uh, you don't have like standard days that, you know, I, I don't have to worry about birthdays. I don't have to worry about going to shops on certain days. Uh, there aren't festivals or anything like that. Uh, there aren't certain days of the week. It's basically just, you know, day one, day two, day three. Sometimes it will rain. Sometimes you'll have wind. You know, this is pretty much the extent of the changes from day to day. But what it does do is provide a really nice, very chill kind of atmosphere where you get to run around in a giant mech and plant crops. The other thing, though, that I wanted to mention, and it is a pet peeve for me, uh, and no, it is not the storage chest thing, although I'm not a fan of how many storage chests I'm trying to do the organization thing. I know it's a trapping of these sort of games for, for like, crafting survival games, even if there aren't survival elements. You, you're you're going to put down a bunch of chests that have very limited space in them until you can get better ones. It's just the way of the world. But something that I would really like to see them improve upon is I don't really like having to switch between the five different uh, tools that I have on my arm. It's not that the switching of tools is necessarily a problem, but I don't really understand why there had to be five. Like, for instance, you have the vacuum cleaner, and the vacuum cleaner will, will suck up weeds, but it will also suck up water. Now, why did you need to suck up the water? Well, you needed that for the water gun. So after I suck up the water to, to water the crops, I need to switch to my water gun in my scroll wheel so that I can water the crops. But before I can water the crops, I need to plant the crops. So I need to go to my seed, my seed gun, which is a different attachment entirely, to plant the seed so that I can put on the attachment. And the reason why I think this could have been streamlined is that there is this thing that's called the spike saw. I think it's called the spike saw. And it has two different modes. You hit the right trigger, and it does like a, a rock pick sort of action. You hit the left trigger, and it does a slicing action for trees. So they understood that you can have multiple modes for these things, why does the seed shooter and the the tree cannon, why are they two different things? Why can't I plant trees by hitting one trigger and plant seeds by hitting the other one? That would have been helpful. Why can't my vacuum cleaner and my water cannon, since they're pretty integrally linked together, why can't they just be on two different triggers? There's no, there's no second trigger for the the vacuum cleaner. Couldn't it be an attachment? Could I hit a different button? Could I just change modes? Something. Anything, please. This would be fun. Could I? Could I? Just a thought for the developers. Could I have two of these equipped at the same time. And maybe I could control one of them, because I have two arms, and the attachment's only on one. What if I could put two different attachments onto my arms at the same time, for convenience, and then one of them is controlled by the triggers on my controller, and the other is controlled by the bumpers? See what I'm getting at here? So that if I know I'm going to be doing crops and watering, I have one hand where I can vacuum. And then I have the other hand for the water cannon so that I can water. Two hands. I'm only utilizing one of my mech hands. This feels like an underutilization of my mech hand. I need more to do with my mech hands. I know that that is a real small gripe 
that <laughs> that's definitely a deep in the weeds sort of problem but i'm just saying that i think it would have been really useful and more streamlined if you could equip two different things at the same time especially because so many of the tools are used in combination with one another and so uh it, it would have been handy feels like it the system could easily be built for that, and then it wasn't utilized that way. Also, while we're on things I'd like to see, I would really love it if instead of just being able to put down, like, one pin on the map, it would be really great if I could assign different kinds of pins to say, like, oh, here's where the copper ore is. Ping! And put, like, a thing, a little icon that I'd recognize as copper ore. So that that's just on the map. That would be really useful. And then also, also, because some of these routes around the map lead to kind of like dead ends that are near cliffs, and it can be a little tricky moving through forests and over hills, and there's, there's a lot of rocky terrain, uh, it would be really useful if I could put down a pin, or if I could select a quest that has a, a marker or something on the map, and then there was a pathing tool, so I knew the direction I was supposed to go to get to that. If I've already been there, especially, can we put down a pathing tool? There's a little bit of a workaround, mind you, where you have the ability later in the game to turn your robot into a road crew, basically, and you can put paths along a line, so you could build your paths, as I did, to the nodes and stuff that you think are going to be pertinent. But why why would I have to do that? I have a giant mech that has, like, sensors and stuff on it. Why wouldn't the mech just be able to, like, put down a VR line, essentially, that says, oh, you want to get to this place? Okay. There's the line. That would be... That'd be great. If they end up putting any of this in the game before this releases, I'm going to be... I'm going to look very stupid. But at the point, at the time that I recorded this, none of this stuff was in the game. <laughs> so, uh, other recommendations. Something to do with a farm. I feel like every time I get to, like, a farming game, th the things that I would recommend are, like, a Sardew Valley or a Coral Island or something like that. And it just, it feels like I'm being redundant here. Oh, you know, this is kind of similar. This would be an alternative. I don't know if it's necessarily a better alternative, but it's an alternative. Uh, Homestead Arcana was a game that came out last year, and it also deals with liberating areas from, a, like, a miasma, a corruption, and then you build a, a farm and, you know, put down crafting stations and stuff like that. It has a similar feel to it. Uh, in that, though, you're you're like a witch, and you can uh, fly around on a broomstick for a good portion of it. So there's that. It also has a similar problem with tedium, though, just so that you know, um, where you have to do a lot of things individually that you feel like you could have streamlined to just say that I, I, I could do five of these things at once. <laughs> um, if you're uh, filling out orders for things, you, you have to like put the individual the the one item in each one of the slots. If it's like I need twenty lavender, I have to put each one of the lavenders in the. S but it is uh fun. It's got a neat graphic style similar to the kind of fun graphic style that they had for Light Your Frontier. Uh, you you do get to harvest a wide variety of crops, and you do meet a bunch of colorful creatures. Although the creatures in Homestead Arcana will try to kill you, so be aware of that. Uh, it's, it's probably pretty close in terms of the overall feel and vibe of this game, so I'm gonna give it to that. It was number 11 on my best of list last year. Not the greatest of farming sims, but I think has a similar feeling to to Light Your Frontier. So maybe check that out if you if the giant mech thing is not working for you. All right. Well, Casual Jack is going to go further into the mines and see if I can grow myself some mushrooms. Not the fun kind though. 
You didn't want to come with me, did you? I hear that one of them makes you taller, and the other one makes you small. Yeah, actually, the one that makes you small, it's like red, and it's got these little white dots on the top. I haven't tried it yet, but it, it looks kind of tasty. Would you like to try one with me? It's always a great idea to have somebody else try the mushrooms first, I find. That's why I'm still alive. Would you like to come with me? It has a very interesting aroma. You don't... Okay. I guess I'll... I guess I'll try it. This may be the last titanium mine. Why is it smiling at me?